In this video, we're going to take a look at creating projects and working with resources. Let's start by creating a new project. So here I can create a new project or I can open an existing project. Any project that I have recently worked on is available here in the recent category. You can see here that I have a getting started project, I have the last open date, and the author. So in this case, I'm going to create a new project. So we'll click Create New. For the project name, I'm going to call this Getting Started uh, 02. All right, now I'll click OK to save this project. You can see now I am presented with the Substance Alchemist UI. I have my 3D view. Right below that, I have my project. And again, it's named Getting Started 02. And right below that, you'll notice that I have this option here for a first collection. Now, a collection is a library of materials. It's helpful to think of it as just a simple folder within your project. Now, I can create new folders. So here, I'm going to click this Create New Folder button. And I'm going to name this library Ground and then click OK. Over here on the far left, you can see that I have the Resources tab. Here is a Starter Materials folder. I'm going to expand the base materials. And here you can see a set of base materials that we ship with Substance Alchemist. You can use these in your projects or to just explore and learn the software. For example, I'm going to click on this Mud Brown to load this material here into the viewport. To navigate the viewport, I can use my left mouse button and drag to orbit the view. I can use my right mouse button and move the mouse forward and backward to zoom out and zoom in. I can also use my middle mouse button, click and drag, to pan the view. So next, I'd like to bring your attention here to the tabs at the top of the UI. You have Explore, Inspire, Create, and Manage. These tabs represent the workflows that you will use in Substance Alchemist. Currently, we are under the Explore tab. This allows us to view our resources, load them into the 3D view, and explore variation as well as create presets. So for example, here I have the Substance Material Mud Brown loaded. I'm going to come over to the Tweak panel and I'm going to adjust some of these controls. So you can see I'm able to make some variation. For example, I'm going to come over to the color. Maybe I'll lighten the value. And again, just play around with some of these settings. Here I'm creating a new preset for this Mud Substance Material. Now, once I have a preset I like, I can save that to my project by clicking Save a Preset button. Here I'm going to give this a preset name. I'm going to call this MUD001. I could add a description for this preset. And then I have the option to choose a destination folder within my project. So here we have that default first collection. And then here we have Ground, which is the folder that I created in a previous step. So here I'll click Save. And now you can see that I've saved this preset here to my project. If I go back to my resources and click on Mud Brown to load that default state of the material, I can then go back to my project, click on my preset to reload that preset value. Again, the parameters are updated here in the Tweak panel. So again, under Explore, we are exploring our material libraries, creating presets and saving those to our project. I can also drag materials from my resource library to my project collections. So let's say here I'm building up a project for ground materials. I'm going to go and grab a few more ground materials, like this stone generic. Here we have this brown sandstone. I'll drag this in. And lastly, here I have this mixed asphalt. Let's drag this in as well. So now I've added these materials here to my project. Here at the top of the UI, under File, I can export my project. So this is going to export a Substance Alchemist project file that I can then open on another computer or share with a team member. Here is where I can also import a project, again, maybe coming from another team member. Another helpful feature of our collections or libraries for our project, I can right-click here and I can choose to export a board. This is going to export an artboard that I can then also share with my colleagues. Here you can see a board that I exported from my material collection of ground. So next, I'd like to take a look at the Display tab. So here I have this Viewer Settings. I'm going to click on Viewer Settings, and at the top we have Global Parameters. So I'm going to open up this menu, and here you can see that we have Output Resolution. 
Here I can change the resolution. Because we're working with substance materials, we can change our resolution. Now, this isn't just scaling up the resolution. Because we're using the substance engine, we are recomputing these textures to be generated at this new resolution. So for example, here I'm going to set this to 2048 by 2048, and I know that I'm now getting a true 2K texture for my material. The next option here is tiling, and here we have controls for tiling the material across the mesh. However, we can also get to the tiling controls here in the 3D view. If we move our mouse here towards the bottom, there's an option for tiling. So I'm going to open up the control here, and you can see that the texture scale for UNV is set to a 2x2 two two tile. I'm actually going to set this to be 1x1, one one, and you can see that I'm able to adjust the tiling across the surface. So next up on the list here, we have mesh. And I can choose different meshes to represent my material. For example, here is the rounded cube. Now since I'm working on a ground material, I'm going to select the plane. And now I'm just going to zoom in and focus this ground plane here in my 3D view. Now the next option we have is environment. Here I'm going to close the mesh so that we can focus just on the environment. The 3D view is lit using a high dynamic range image. Here we have a list of high dynamic range images that we can use in our project. If I come over here to the Is Visible flag and enable this, here you can see the actual environment in the 3D view. We also have this environment rotation slider. So if I move the slider, you can see that I'm able to rotate the environment and thus change the lighting direction for my scene. Now a very handy shortcut for this is to use the Shift and right mouse button. So here I'm just going to click in the viewport to activate it, hold down the shift key and use my right mouse button and move my mouse left to right to rotate the environment. Notice that the environment rotation slider is updating as I use this keyboard shortcut. This is typically the preferred way of rotating the environment. So for the rest of this video, I'm just going to take the is visible flag and I'm going to disable that. So now we know that we can navigate our 3D view and rotate the environment using various keyboard shortcuts. So now let's close up this environment tab and let's take a look at camera. So here we can change the field of view for our camera. I'm just going to leave this at the default 45. Next up we have our shader. You can think of the shader settings as basically setting the quality of the rendering here in our 3D view. For example, we have the sample settings, the tessellation shader, we have displacement amplitude amounts, as well as quality. Now these are sliders, but they can also be accessed directly in the 3D view. If we come over here to the bottom right, we have this displacement button. So for example, I'm going to click this button, and I have my amplitude slider. I can start to increase this, and you can see that we can view displacement here in our 3D view. Now the quality is pretty low, so I'm going to take the slider and move it all the way to 1. Then I'm going to make an adjustment here to that displacement amplitude. You'll also notice here that we have this shadows option. So if I enable shadows, we can start to render shadows here in our 3D view. With shadows enabled, we get a better sense of the overall shape and form of our material. Shadows can also be enabled and disabled directly here in the 3D view by clicking the Disable Shadows button. You can toggle this on and off. Notice with shadows enabled, if I start to navigate my 3D view, we get a rough approximation of the shadow, and as soon as I stop navigating the view, the shadows will refine. I'm going to go ahead and leave the shadows enabled as I work. So now I'd like to jump back over to our Resources tab. The resources represent various libraries of materials that we load into Substance Alchemist. And here we have a folder, Starter Materials. Now I can import materials into a folder by clicking this plus button. I can also load material libraries using the Local Disks option. So I have a set of Substance Materials that I've been working on, and I'd like to be able to load that library here into Substance Alchemist. So it's available to me as a resource to use in my various Substance Alchemist projects. So here I'm going to click the plus button, and I have an option here to connect a local folder. So I'm going to choose this option. Here I'm asked to browse for a folder. Here I'm going to jump out to my OneDrive, and in my toolbox, I have a Substance SBSAR folder that contains some Substance materials that, again, I'd like to load as a resource into Substance Alchemist. So I'm going to select this folder, 
I do not have any subfolders, so I'm going to keep this include subfolders turned off. And here, if I like, I could give this an optional name. I'm going to call it materials. And then we will click the add button. Now I can come over to my materials and I can expand this view. And you can see here that the material thumbnails are being generated for me. So I can focus just on these materials. I'm going to come back to this base materials folder. I'm going to click this breadcrumb button to collapse it. I have my own library of resources that have now been loaded into Substance Alchemist. Here I'm going to click on one of my materials to load that into my 3D view. And here's the result. This is a substance material that I created using Substance Designer, exported that as an SBS AR file or a Substance Archive file, and now I'm loading that here as a resource into Substance Alchemist. I'd like to be able to use this as part of my project, so I might as well just click and drag this here into my ground library folder. Now, there's another way that we can load resources here into Substance Alchemist, and that's by using Substance Source. Substance Source is our online material library of physically based materials that's updated and curated on a monthly basis. If you are on Substance Subscription, you have access to Substance Source. Now, I can load content from Substance Source using the freely available Substance Launcher. So here I have the Substance Launcher open, and I'm going to come over to the Substance Source tab, and I'm going to look at some ground assets. So now I can browse through Substance Source, and I'm going to find a material that I would like to use. I would like to use this excellent Iceland grassy cliff material. And you can see that I have options to send to software. I want to use the Send to Project Alchemist. So all I need to do is click this button to download the Substance material, and then it will appear for me in Substance Alchemist. Here I can see that this has been sent to Alchemist. I'm going to minimize the Substance Launcher. And here in Substance Source, underneath the Sent from Substance Launcher, I'm going to expand these items, and here you can see the material is loaded here for me. Again, this is a material I think I want to use in my ground project, so I'm just going to left-click and drag and drop that here into my ground library folder of my Getting Started project. So next, I'd like to take a look at this Inspire tab. So I'm going to click Inspire, and you can see that that loads the current material that I'm viewing in my 3D view as the input material. Now I have another input for an image. I'm going to drag in an image that I want to use as a reference. So here is the image. I'm just grabbing this from my desktop and dragging and dropping this here into Substance Alchemist. You can see that I have this image. It's not related to this ground. However, Substance Alchemist instantly extracted a range of values based on these parameter settings I have for a specific color strategy. Here I'm going to just enable the sort by hue option, and I'm going to make a change to my color strategy. Maybe here I'll try something like deepness. I'm going to set the number of colors to extract to maybe a value of two. Uh, and again, let me just kind of play around. I'm going to grab the darker value. So I'm actually going to switch this to darkness. So now you can see it's extracted these, this range of values. Now here I can click the Generate Variation button, and Alchemist is going to generate a variation of my material based on these extracted colors. And so now that that has been completed here in my 3D view, you can see the result of this new variation. So I was able to use this image, or let's say, or better said, the color values of this image to get inspired for creating some variations for my material. Let's say that I like this variation. I can just click and drag this variation right here again to my ground library of my getting started project. Let's take a look at another example. This time, I might try something like uh, the purity, and I'll increase my color range here to maybe something like four, and let's try generating a variation from this. So again, same process. It's going to create a variation for me, and then that variation will be loaded here in my 3D view. So all of the colors have been changed, and you can see that I get a completely different variation with very little effort, all based on extracted color values from an image I found online. I like this preset, so I might as well just save this here to my project. Again, a simple drag and drop to the ground library of my getting started project. So here, let's try one more example. I'm going to grab another image, place this into my input images. You can see the extracted color range from this. 
Maybe this time I'm going to set this to maybe, again, a value of 3 for this. Actually, let me just move this lighter here to a value of 3. And then we will click the Generate Variation button, and let's see what we get from here. All right, so now I have another variation. This is, again, pretty cool. I like this preset, so I'm just going to just left-click and drag and drop and save this once more to my project. So in this video, we've taken a look at some basic functionality of using Substance Alchemist. We were able to use the Explore tab to check out some resources. We were able to view them. We were able to explore variation and save presets to our project. We also talked about some important settings in our display tab, as well as how we can use the inspire tab to use images to quickly generate extracted color values and create interesting variations for our materials. And we can also easily save these presets to our project. In the next video, we are gonna take a look at how we can create materials by mixing and matching, as well as adding procedural effects to materials that are part of our resources. So take a little time to play around, and when you're ready, join me in the next video.